many of us like the way that we are right now? Don't put your hand up. Don't raise your hand. Because this next statement may change your mind. There are some things about each and every person in here today that can use some change. Not changing for the worst, but changing for the better. In other words, everyone can stand to be changed for the better. Notice I didn't say for the better of someone else. But I said for the better of oneself. Amen? Amen. I say that because we are individually and uniquely made. We are made differently from anyone else. Your genetic makeup is yours and yours alone. You are who you are. If it were not so, your fingerprint would look like her fingerprint. Amen? Your hair color would be like his hair color. Your shape would be like her shape. But we are uniquely made. And with our uniqueness, we also have the power to change some things about ourselves naturally. For instance, if you don't like your weight, that you carry naturally, you can change that. If you don't like the way that your hair is on your head, you can change that. If you don't like your attitude because it brings you negative results, you can change that. We need to understand today that God has given us power to make some changes in our own lives if we want to. Key word is want. Because some of us think that we're perfect and we don't need to change at all. But everybody can stand to change. At some point in time in our lives, at some area in our lives, through our ups and our downs, some of us can stand a change. So ask yourself the question, What do I want for myself that will bring about the new me? One of the major pitfalls of man is that learning to push past the things that we don't like and striving towards the things that we can't change. Amen? Amen. Some of us today are not happy with where we are, with who we are, but instead of doing something about it, we sit dying inside and won't make the adjustments towards the better you. Listen, God has given us all the tools that we need to become better people. So study, learn and recognize the urgency of being new. And the others dwell on the old them and being destructive and unhappy. Listen, I don't know of anyone who can bring old ways to new technology and expect new technology to work perfectly fine. We're not saying that the old is broken, but we are making it work better and more efficient will be more beneficial. So in other words, we need to be better today than we were yesterday. Amen. yesterday. When we wake up in the morning, we should be looking forward to betterment on everyday basis. Not stuck in our old ways. God is looking for a change in us. God is looking for happiness in us. God is looking for faithfulness in us. God is looking for obedience in us. God is looking for the in us. How many of us are willing to be new? How many of us are willing to step away from the old us and put on the new us? Amen? Some of us, we are happy right where we are, but I'm telling you, there's a better you on the other side. There is more to just being where you are. Every day you wake up, you should say, I'm waking up to be more 
great than I am right now. We should be pushing forward towards our goal. We should be giving more of ourselves. We should be doing more for ourselves. Making this world a better place. The songwriter wrote, reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. She's not talking about physically touching somebody's hand and making this world a better place. She's saying do something that means something so that this world can be a better place. You can't sit there complacent where you are and expect the world to get better. Getting healthy, getting better is infectious. Amen. If one person sees that you got better from your bad situation, that gives them a testimony, that gives them a reason to go forward and push more towards their goal because if they look at you and say, you can do it, then they believe that they can do it and God knows that we can all do it if we try. Three points today. Number one, Number one, put off, put off your, old self. your old self. Some of us, we got some bad habits. Some of us got some old stuff that we still dealing with from the 70s. Some of us got some old habits we still dealing with from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, uh, of the early 2000s. And now that we are in 2020, we should have changed by now. Those habits that got us where we really don't want to be, we should have left them behind by now. Sometimes you got to get rid of that old stuff because it's clogging up where you are really supposed to be. I heard somebody say, I got a new home over in Zion. I heard somebody say, I got new stuff. I, I need new stuff. I, I want new stuff. Well, I'm telling you that you can't get no new stuff if the old stuff is in the way. Sometimes you got to move the old stuff out of the way to make room for the new stuff. I'm not telling you to go home and clean out all your house talking about you need some new furniture. Don't go home and tell your husband, Rev, say clean it up so I can get my new stuff. It might work. I don't know. You keep trying. Huh? But the reality is sometimes you got to take off your old self. Those old ways that you know are not working. Amen. Those old things that are keeping you from being great and you should want to be great every day. Every day you wake up you should say I'm going to be greater than I was yesterday. You're going to have to take off that old self. You're going to have to get rid of them. Those, those, those old ways, that old drinking that we used to do that we so drunk we don't even know how we got home the next day. I'm talking about take off that old stuff, that, 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 that those drugs that we, we got to stop using those drugs because it's not doing anything but tearing your body and people don't believe this but I heard my father say it and I'm looking at it in the present time the things that you do in your youth will flat foot run you down when you get old. I'm looking at an old body amen that when my father told me don't jump off of that now my knees are hurting. My father said don't pin down that far now my back is hurting. My father said you shouldn't lift that much weight now my elbows are hurting what he said right is true. Amen. The things you do in your youth Amen. will flat foot run you down. Number two, Number two. Put, on put on your new self. Where do you find your new self? Hmm. Can somebody tell me where you find your new self? We've been searching high and low trying to find our new self, but your new self is right here. Amen. The new self is within on the inside of what you already have. But the key to finding your new self is changing your mind. Amen. Uh, some of us, we say uh, negative things all the time. I want to be this, but I can't because. I want to go there, but I can't because. I, I, I want to show somebody this, but I can't because. Uh, if you look with yourself and realize and, and understand that the because is the problem, then we need to take that because out of the equation. And then once you remove the because, you begin to understand that I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to go 
want. Uh, tell God where it is you want to be. Tell God who it is you want to be. Change your way of thinking. Uh, elevate your mind uh, so that you can get a little higher than you are right now. Uh, God is looking for you to step up a little higher. God is looking for you to move a little further. God wants to give you the desires of your heart. But first thing you got to do uh, is change your way of thinking. how God blesses your life. Number three. Number three. Be, true. be true. A lot of us, we don't know what it is to be true. Amen. Be true is being in accordance with the actual state of affairs. In other words, being true means uh, 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 actually being uh, 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 targeted. You, you got to have a target. Amen. You got to be uh, uh, in place. You got to be factual. You got to be actual if you're trying to be true. And one of the problems that we have here today, uh, one of the problems that we have here today is that we are not true. We're not true to ourselves. We're not true to our brothers and sisters. We're not true to our friends. Some of us will lie just to look in our face. Ain't got nothing to talk about, so we'll make up something to talk about. Some of us are just lie just because we all sitting down together eating and somebody say, it's too quiet in here, I got to tell this lie. And some of us, we're not cognizant of the fact that we're telling a lie. And some of us, we can't help but to tell a lie. That's not being true. I heard somebody say, if you ain't got nothing good to say, then don't say nothing at all. I don't know if that's only in the black family, but I know it's in the family. If you ain't got nothing to say, then keep your mouth closed. I don't want to hear your negativity because your negativity ain't of God. God only wants us to be positive in all our ways. Yes, you can get angry, but don't be sitting while you're angry. Just be positive in all of your goodness. Be true to yourself. Be true to God. Do you pray every day? Yes. Do, do you tell God thank you every day? Do you? Yeah, I don't care if you've been blessing your food, but somehow or another, you need to be true to God. God knows who you are in the first place. God knows what you are in the first place. God knows that the things that you want, he, he knows everything that you need. All you got to do is be true. Some of us can't be true to save our lives, though. But be accurate in all of your dealings. Be truthful in all of your dealings. Be in accordance in all of your state of affairs. Amen. Amen. Here in the Bible, we find that Paul was talking to the Ephesians and testifying in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the fertility of their minds. Amen. What God is saying here is that they got some crazy thoughts in their minds, but the way that I taught you, you shouldn't be thinking like that. The way that they're acting, you shouldn't be acting like that. In other words, when you become taught in Christ Jesus, you no longer can be the same way that you used to be. You can no longer act the way that you used to act because God has made a difference in your life. The Bible says they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their hearts. There are some people today that just can't let God in because their hearts are too hard. One of the problems we have with society today is that when you go and explain the work of God, they hit you with some fake history that ain't got nothing to do with God and it just tears up everything that God is trying to build. Uh, but that is not the way that you learn Christ. Assuming that you heard about him and uh, were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self. So if you are in Jesus, if you are in Christ Jesus, then you ain't got no other uh, uh, thought but to put the old self off. For the manner of life is corrupt through the secret desires. Our desires should be put away and then you be see a new you. Renew the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. You can't think like you used to think no more. Change your mind. If you 
change your mind, there are some things that will change for you. If you change your mind, there are some ways that will change for you. If you change your mind, there are some things that will change for you. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. You ain't got to lie to them no more. You ain't got to make them nothing to talk about. You speak the truth with your neighbor. You tell them about all that goodness that God has done for you. What we need to understand today is that if you speak goodness, you'll see goodness. Give no opportunity to the devil. And we give him plenty of opportunity on a daily basis. We leave room for the devil to come in and just tear up our households. I was in the closet today talking with one of my children and they said, I don't know if I got $8 to pay my tithe. I said, you better not let the devil come in this house and tear it up. You better pay your tithe. You better find them $8 so you can pay them tithes. I don't want my house to be cursed. But you have to teach them from a young age how to, how to, 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 to maneuver in the realm where we are. Because the devil is prevalent. He's all around. He's pouncing. He's seeking who he can devour, who he can kill. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. But only such as is good for the building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. In other words, you ought to speak goodness all the time. You ought not let any bad thing come out of your mouth. You ought to always be speaking positive. Again, if you ain't got nothing good to say, then keep your mouth. Let all that bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you. Along with all of the malice, be kind to one another. Tender heart, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. How did you expect for God to forgive you whom which you never see and you can't even forgive your brothers and your sisters on whom you see every day? How did you expect for God to love you whom you never see and you can't love your brothers and sisters on which you see every day. We got to take off our old self and put on the new self. Use your spiritual eyes when you're looking at your brothers and your sisters. Put on your spiritual eyes when it's time to give. Put on your spiritual eyes when it's time to make a difference. Put on your spiritual eyes. We've been living with the physical for so long that we forgot what the spiritual looks like. You better be careful though because my Bible tells us this. Be careful of the way that you entertain guests. Because you never know you may be entertaining an angel. An angel has a direct contact with God. He can get back to him and deliver messages. He can tell him all about your sorrows, all of your pain. He can help you, give you power, give you strength by way of God. So I'm telling you today to put on the new you so that God can be a blessing in your life. Let us stand all over the century. The doors of the church are open. There may be someone who wants to give their heart to the Lord. There may be someone who is out of the ark of safety. There may be someone who wants to be baptized. Maybe someone who's looking for a church home. I don't know. But now is your opportunity to come. Would there be one today? There may be some of us who've been praying for a long time and we feel like our prayers are not being answered. We ask that you come now. 
kneel at the altar and give all of your problems to the Lord. Will there be one today? Will there be one today?